Churchill McKinnon. Now, you have heard the great stories. Helen of Troy and the Trojan War, Troilus and Cressida. Why would I bore you with these tales told again when I can speak of Renard the Fox? Come in. I will speak of Renard the Fox, courtier in the court of King Noble the Lion and fierce rival of Isengrim the Wolf. I will tell you an early tale before his great rivalry when he was a simple traveler. And one day, traveling Renard the Fox came upon a beautiful farm. It was rich, it had orchids and orchards, and it had fields of vegetables growing, and of particular importance to the fox, chickens. <laughs> Lots of lovely, succulent chickens running around with their tiny little legs. And Renard looked over the fence and thought, I will die if I cannot eat these chickens. Oh, but there was the fence. Stake fence interwoven with hawthorn break. And when he tried to go under, there were thorns, and he was wearing his good red coat, and he did not want to have it caught. He thought, perhaps, I could go over, and he looked into the trees, but from the trees there was no place he could jump down into the yard where the chickens would not see him and immediately scramble, and they could go under the hedge where he could not get them. Well, he could not go under, he could not go over, so he started to go around. And going around the farm, he finally found a break in the fence, a hole small enough that he could squirm through it. And he squirmed through and he landed in the cabbages. But there was a noise. And all the chickens immediately panicked. And they scattered and made all sorts of noise. Now, Chanticleer the rooster was returning from the field, where he likes to sit on a particular dung hill to best display his majesty. <laughs> and coming back from the field, Chanticleer the rooster sees all the hens screaming and circling. So he goes to his wife, Dame Tinta, and he says, what is all this noise? And she says, oh, there, there was a noise and, and movement in the cabbage fields. Surely there's some great animal come to eat us all up. And the rooster said, oh, you are a silly hen. There is nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> and she said, no, no, surely it will kill us all. He says, well, well I will keep watch. But Chanticleer the rooster, he was not afraid. He looked but he was too wise to see. And so, as he stood watch, mm -hmm. he gently allowed himself to drift into sleep. But then he had a terrible dream. He dreamed that someone came behind him and thrust a shirt or a cloak about him lined with fur. And he kept trying to force his head through the head hole, but it getting smaller and smaller, and there were thorns inside, and he woke up screaming. And he ran, flustered back to the hens. And the hens were, well, why are you screaming? Why are you flustered? I had this terrible dream. Oh, you are a silly rooster. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> so he told Dame Penta, who was wise, his dream. And she said, oh, this is what it means. You were not being stuffed into a shirt or a cloak, but down the gullet of an hungry beast. And what you took for thorns were his teeth. And what you took for fur lining was his fur coat. No, said the rooster, there's nothing to be afraid of. It is a dream. I, I will not be afraid. And so he went back out to the field to be by himself and to recover his dignity and his majesty <laughs> over there by the cabbage patch. <laughs> now, Bernard the fox has been watching. And he slips forward quietly, quietly, and the rooster eventually drifts back off into sleep. And Bernard pounces forward, but he startles the rooster. And he wakes, and he screams. And Renard immediately says, oh, Chanticleer, I am so sorry. I startled you. You are a close friend of mine. Why, we are almost kin, and I would never hurt my family. No, I have actually come on hopes to find you, for I remember your father, Chanticleer, who could sing a note so pure and strong that everybody farms and miles away would marvel at it. Will you not sing for me? Well, the rooster was not entirely trusting the fox. He took a step back, and the fox innocently remained where he was. And then Chanticleer began to sing, as loud and as strong as he could. And when he was done, the fox said, well, that was marvelous. But truth be told, if that is your very best, I am a little disappointed. <laughs> For your father 
could sing so marvelously. Twenty miles around, people could hear him. But he threw himself at the music, closing both of his eyes and becoming part of the song. He sang best with his eyes closed. <laughs> so Chanticleer, being proud, took a deep breath and closed his eyes and opened his mouth to sing. Whereupon Reynard grabbed him in his mouth and ran across the field. <laughs> at that moment, though, as it was almost vespers, the farmer's wife came out to gather the chickens in. And she saw them all running and screaming and looking across the field. She saw a fox running away with her fine rooster. So she ran after him and screamed and was throwing sticks, but she could not catch him. And the farmer came out and said, wife, what are you doing? Why are you running across the field? Where are the chickens that should be in? And she shows him the fox running away with the rooster. Well, why didn't you stop him? Well, what could I do? Did you throw a stick at him? Yes, I threw a stick. So after this argument was going on, the fox was finding his way through the fence. And thus giving away his position, the farmer unleashed the hounds, hellbiter full hammer. And he unleashed the hounds, and they chased the fox, and they ran to the forest over the river until the fox found a little hollow where the hounds could not go. And the hounds all bayed and circled, and the farmer came cursing the fox's name. And the rooster, hanging from the fox's jaws, said, well, you must be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Why, how can you let them mock you like this? Are you not the clever fox? Do you not come to the den and get to the corner of the hollow and show them that you are not afraid? Now, Renard is a very crafty fox. But every once in a while, pride fools the smartest mind. And sure enough, the fox stepped to the opening of the hollow and opened his mouth to speak and proclaimed, He is mine! And Chanticleer immediately flew away into a tree and was gone. <laughs> and Renard had to sleep back into his hollow until he had a chance to slip away alone into the forest 